Okay, so shall we start? Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Indorama Venture Sessions, the role of circular, circularity in a low carbon world. My name is Navin Suda. I'm the head of global CSR at Indorama Ventures, and I will be your moderator today. For some of you who might not familiar with Indorama Ventures, we are one of the leading global chemical company. We have headquarters in Bangkok, Thailand, and our operations spanning over 148 sites in 35 countries, and we have around 26 employees worldwide. Um, I believe that we all hear from the conversation going on around us that there is an urgent need to take a more comprehensive approach for the transition to a low-carbon economy. In this session, we will learn how uh, low carbon and circular economy is linked as a pillar of global sustainable development and some of the work that we do in this area. It is my pleasure to introduce to our speaker. Unfortunately, he cannot be with us in person today, but will join us online. Ladies and gentlemen, um, please join me welcome Mr. Anthony Watanabe. Chief Sustainability Officer at Indorama Ventures. Over to you, Anthony. Thank you, Kunawi Suda, and greetings, everybody. Yes, and I am actually here in Dubai um, and attending COP and learning a lot from uh, my fellow um, uh, climate change uh, champions, let's say, um, but just could not be in the pavilion today. So pleasure to be with you uh, nonetheless. And after that very inspiring um, youth panel um, to share a bit about Indorama's role in contributing to a low carbon world. And in fact, um, a few days ago, I had the pleasure of attending a breakfast organized by the World Economic Forum, bringing together chief sustainability officers and, uh, officers and youth leaders. And it was very inspiring, um, in fact. And uh, I think it's something that um, we've expressed that the WEF continue in terms of bringing together uh, leaders working in big corporations, and then many passionate, smart, engaged young people working on the ground. So I was neat to see that um, uh, tail end of that conversation just before our session today. So if we can move to the next slide. Um, so Indorama Ventures is a Thai-listed uh, petrochemical uh, multinational company operational in um, 35 countries around the world uh, with 26,000 employees and about 150 manufacturing sites. And um, uh, it, last year, we launched a purpose, um, reimagining chemistry together to create a better world. Uh, and this really uh, resonates with um, us working in sustainability and in recycling and recycling education. And of course, the sense of partnership um, uh, coming in the purpose you will see permeated throughout my presentation today. Um, all right. Uh, on the next slide, then, you have um, our sustainability journey. We began in 2010-2011 when we were listed on the Stock Exchange of Thailand and thus began, um, I would say, a big cultural transformation around having to collect sustainability performance data from our various manufacturing sites. Uh, sometimes in the early days, the, the site uh, people didn't understand why, what was the purpose. So we continue that educational journey. Um, we have a dedicated team working on reporting and disclosure. Um, that's a, right now a four-person team of uh, very smart Thai women, as it were, based in our Bangkok office, reporting to uh, my colleague, Harsha. And um, you will see that uh, towards the end of the presentation that uh, whether it's Dow Jones Sustainability Index, the Carbon Disclosure Project, our annual sustainability report and many other reports because of course the reporting landscape is is in full expansion now um, that's in a very busy and deliberate area of activity for Indorama and we've received um, very strong recognition I think of our efforts for um, clear transparent accurate reporting and disclosure if we can move to the next slide please so at our Capital Markets Day, we launched a Vision 2030, um, and you see our purpose uh, squarely in the middle of that, um, uh, of that vision. It has three parts, um, decarbonize our operations, um, uh, um, uh, where we focus very much on our, our decarbonization strategy, which I can certainly go into um, in, a, in a subsequent slide. 
then future proofing our organization, which includes, of course, um, digital tools, um, uh, next generation of leaders, Lean Six Sigma. In fact, I've had the pleasure this year of sponsoring two different leadership programs within Indorama. So one is a future leaders program. There are 48 people across our global organization from 25 to 35 years old who are at the start of a year long journey of uh, 360 degree surveys, coaching, um, uh, sim simulations and scenarios and so on. So one of my staff is uh, enrolled in that program. And then there's a fourth cohort of a partnership we have with INSEAD, um, more um, seasoned leaders, some quite senior people, in fact, and I was privileged to sponsor um, one of those groups uh, this year that recently presented. In fact, it was about two weeks ago that they presented their final um, kind of strategy on um, emerging stronger from a complex operating environment. So this role, uh, this idea of future proofing and creating next generation leaders, it's not just words on a slide. It's actually very, very active programs within Indorama. And then I will talk a lot about the other part of our Vision 2030, which is innovative and sustainable products. Um, and that is doubling down on our recycled PET and some very exciting updates I can share with you there. Um, uh, increasing our, our feedstock, which comes from biomass sources um, and starting to wean ourselves off of fossil fuels in that case, and then really doubling down on, on uh, research and development as well with respect to how do we delight our customers with lower carbon uh, products and high performance uh, solutions. On the next slide, you have um, uh, an image pulled from our latest sustainability report. So I won't go into detail in this, but I would like you to see and appreciate that um, our targets are very comprehensive, whether it's recycling, education, health and safety, um, waste, water, of course, renewables, and even um, you know at um, 11 o'clock, uh, the CapEx that we are investing in various sustainability projects towards 2025 and 2030. So I invite you to uh, peruse our uh, latest sustainability report at your convenience. Um, and I'll go into detail for some of these targets in the following slides. And of course, welcome any uh, questions um, after the panel or uh, afterwards, uh, indeed, um, uh, as they come to you. So the next slide uh, lays out our six-pronged decarbonization strategy. And from here, you can see as we move from left to right, like many uh, big corporations, we'll start with where things make sense and where they're, um, uh, I would say, low-hanging fruit. So improving operational efficiency. In fact, Indorama's uh, incredible success has been built on this philosophy of in, uh, indeed acquiring underperforming assets and then uh, working together with the existing teams and partners to optimize them, uh, sometimes beyond even 100% capacity. So it's been an incredible uh, journey and in the last few years, we've brought that same, I would say, engineering prowess uh, to um, decarbonizing our operations. And so um, that is the case uh, for a, a number of projects we have underway, which we call our, our green projects. Um, then uh, after that, there is the energy transition. And indeed, here at COP, there's a full, uh, there's a full pavilion dedicated to the energy transition, which of course I have uh, visited and engage with some of the um, uh, exhibitors there. So everything from renewable energy to coal phase out. Let's see, on the renewable side, we have a number of on-site installations across many of our sites, particularly in Asia. Um, but our appetite uh, for renewables is quite voracious. So the on-site uh, capacity just will not meet our, our demand and our targets. So we're in very active uh, and late stage exploration of virtual power purchase agreements in the EU and also in the US and also working through um, different multilateral groups, whether it's uh, AmCham's ESG Council in Thailand or various USAID programs in developing Asia to help shift the policy needle to enable more large scale renewables in our operations and those of other manufacturers. Um, on the coal side, we still have a number of plants uh, powered by coal. Uh, they are all in Asia and we have a commitment to phase them out by 2030. And my team and I are working closely with the business leaders to try and see how we can bring some of those uh, phase outs forward, uh, because we know that it's a very clear cause and effect uh, when it comes to decarbonizing our operations. 
Recycling, I will go into more detail in the subsequent slides. I'll just point out maybe um, uh, two items here. What most of us understand as recycling is just one type of recycling. That's mechanical recycling, where the bottles are collected, washed, um, crushed, and broken down into flakes, and then melted into pellets, which then go into a new process. But there's a whole other spectrum of recycling called advanced or chemical recycling. And there's not one type. There are several types there. And I will talk in more detail about some of our um, innovations and investments in that uh, advanced type of, of recycling. Um, renewable feedstock is another important area. These are really emerging technologies, both the chemical recycling and the renewable feedstock to reach scale. And so that is something that we're um, investing heavily in. I'll talk more about our team that's based in Milan, a dedicated team looking at these areas. You know, today Indorama is um, the largest recycler of PET in the world. So the scale that we operate at, and, and as you'll see in a moment, very, uh, I would say, ambitious goals for increasing um, uh, that recycling footprint. So um, things like um, chemical recycling and, uh, and renewable feedstock are still emerging areas, and we're really trying to act as a catalyst uh, to invest in these areas and help them scale uh, for the good of the market and, of course, to the delight of our customers who have um, uh, ambitious uh, publicly stated goals for recycled content in their packaging going forward. Then in the midterm under future technology, we have things like carbon capture and um, we have a big project in the works at our largest site in Texas. This is a big carbon capture project and I actually here at COP as, as uh, you know, COP uh, enables I met with the CEO of uh, one of our technical partners um, for this project. And um, that's an exciting journey. We're uh, fully intending to take advantage of the IRA benefits in the United States. We have actually captured some carbon in our portfolio um, in Brazil and converted that to a food grade carbonate. So we would like to focus more on carbon circularity, which would give things like food grade carbonate, ethylene carbonate for electric vehicle batteries, or um, ethanol, which can then be um, uh, reused back into new products, even like athletic apparel, like our technical partner showed us um, the other day. So uh, that's an exciting project and an exciting space. It is technically feasible. It is still expensive. That's why we do need um, support in certain areas. And for a hard to abate sector, um, uh, like the petrochemical sector, it's an important part uh, of the strategy. And uh, at the far right, under natural capital solutions, this is an area where I've been spending much more time over the last six or eight months. And as we look to take Indorama um, on, I would say, a parallel journey in 2024 going forward around biodiversity and climate adaptation risk, natural capital solutions need to be a part of that mix and, in fact, um, are, are an enabler there. So this is a very interesting space. And for anybody who is following the voluntary carbon market, there has been some turmoil in that space. I have some very good friends working to correct uh, that um, in, the, in the broader global market. And um, even here at COP have met some incredible people and, and innovators working in this space around oceans, around forests, around data sources for tracking this. So this is a very interesting one. We have a lot to learn at Indorama and we are eager students to step into that to see how it can support our business and support our customers going forward. Uh, we can move to the next slide, please. Uh, Indorama was uh, the first company in Thailand to produce a sustainable development goal report. So we've now uh, released our second uh, report. And you can see here as an excerpt from that report how we've identified five key focus areas and then uh, around recycling, for example, health and safety and so on. Um, and CSR, Kunao in Suda, we'll talk a bit more about that um, in a moment. And then um, how those uh, key focus areas uh, drill down into relevant strategies for Indorama, uh, some of which I've already uh, gone through, and then how they link up to, um, in fact, 13 of the 17 sustainable development goals. So this is a nice way, and I think that, you know, everybody agrees the SDGs are a common language for governments, businesses, civil society organizations to engage and to track progress. And I think this is a very, um, uh, you know, um, useful framework that we want to participate in. And, and it's part of that very dynamic four-person team that I mentioned. Uh, this is a part of the report uh, landscape that they also engage in. Um, I'll have um, some QR codes at the end of the presentation where you can actually scan and, and uh, peruse these various reports, including our sustainable development goal report. 
On to the next slide, please. All right, so let's talk about recycling. So currently today, as I mentioned, Indorama is the largest recycler of PET in the world. So driving a circular economy from a Thailand base. We have, um, uh, depending on the count, 19, 20 uh, sites. We have actually a few more I'll, I'll talk about that are in development across 10 countries. And this is all mechanical recycling as it stands today. Um, and uh, many of these were sites, existing sites that we acquired and then integrated into the Indorama family. What we do have now, including a couple that are listed here, are some new greenfield sites. So, for instance, last year in the Philippines, we opened a new recycling facility uh, as a joint venture with the Coca-Cola bottler in the Philippines. That's a two billion bottle per year facility. Um, and we just commissioned a new plant in Indonesia, in Karawang, just outside of Jakarta. Um, that's also about a similar scale. Those plants were uh, financed in part by the world's first ever blue loan. So that is a $300 million loan provided by the Asian Development Bank, the International Finance Corporation, and the German Development Bank. And the proceeds, it's very specific, the use of proceeds are to build five recycling plants, mechanical recycling plants, four in developing Asia and then Brazil. And so um, in the Philippines and in Indonesia, those are uh, products of that blue loan. And why is it blue? Well, because the more that we can um, collect and recycle um, used PET bottles, uh, the less we will have uh, uh, the, the pollution uh, ending up in the ocean, the plastic waste ending in the ocean, and thus keeping our waters more blue. So um, very innovative financial tool. I understand there has now been a second uh, blue loan issued by the Asian Development Bank, but we were definitely um, the first and, and very um, happy with that partnership with those three financial institutions. We also have two recycling plants in development in India, also a part of that blue loan um, financing. So there is also a lot of talk here at COP, of course, about financing. You know, the, the big news on the loss and development fund that was announced early on uh, in COP is, is sort of a, a, an important part of that um, uh, with respect to adaptation uh, risk and natural disasters. Uh, and you see here from the small example from Indorama, a big one for us, uh, nonetheless, that innovative financial tools can indeed move the needle and can make things happen. And um, we're very pleased with that partnership. And uh, as we say, one plant is operational, another has just been commissioned uh, to our in development in India. So let's move to the next slide, please. As you might have gleaned from my background, um, we have reached a significant milestone in the history of, uh, of circularity and recycling for Indorama. And that was that in September of 2023, we had uh, achieved uh, 100 billion PET bottles recycled since inception. Uh, so quite an exciting moment for us. I will talk a bit more later about what that means going forward and how we plan to scale this. Um, but perhaps for the moment, uh, we have a short video uh, and we'd like to show that now just to celebrate this milestone of 100 billion bottles recycled. It started with one. One PET bottle recycled by Indorama Ventures in 2011. By 2020, we reached 50 billion PET bottles recycled, and we pledge to keep going. Today, in September 2023, just three years later, we have hit the milestone of recycling 100 billion PET bottles. We employ a full life cycle perspective, recycling materials to give them new life. By the time this video ends, we would have recycled 38,304 bottles. Thank you for helping us recycle, a significant step to build a circular economy. We could not have achieved this without you. Together, we are creating a better world. Great, thank you. So um, we can go to the next slide. You might have seen in that video the mention of life cycle assessment. So that's an interesting piece just to quickly pick up on as we transition to this value creation slide. So we have been receiving a lot of requests for life cycle assessment of our various products. And as a result, we recently hired two LCA experts. Um, so they are on my team sitting in India and um, 
running 15 to 20 LCAs per year at the request of our customers in an effort to really collaborate on how we drive a circular economy. It's a very exciting development. It's a first for Indorama, and I think indicative of the evolution and innovation of the market and also that SDG 17, that spirit of partnership. Um, so uh, just a, a bookend and very exciting moment for Indorama for um, the 100 billion bottles. Now, let me jump uh, from this slide to 2030 and then I'll kind of work backwards. That's 100 billion bottles in 11 years, as we stated in the video. Our target for 2030, that 1.5 million tons of post-consumer PET bail input, which we committed to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, that target equals 100 billion bottles every year. So it took us 11 years to scale to that point. And now with uh, a lot of ambition uh, and a lot of um, innovation and investment, we have a target of 100 billion bottles every year by 2030 to recycle. So very significant. And to reach uh, that target, it takes all players along um, the ecosystem. And I'll go into a bit more detail about that later. But that's our 2030 target midway for 2025. It's half of that 750,000 tons. And if you see our 2022 actual, we're about halfway there. So those new recycling plants uh, coming online that I mentioned facilitated by the blue loan, they are critical to even getting us to that midterm target. And then getting to 2030 is gonna take um, policy change, which I will reference um, in a moment. It's gonna take innovation like chemical recycling, like I mentioned. It will take education, and Kunawin Suda will talk a bit about that um, in a minute. So very significant. Um, I think, uh, you know, I do a lot of uh, presentations and discussions on the circular economy, and I think um, PET is, as the video says, it's a polymer that's made to be remade. It is the most recycled polymer today, and yet um, on a global scale, it's about a 60% collection rate if you normalize across the, the variability of different countries. So there's still a long way to go. And we know that there's still um, an issue with the mismanagement of plastic waste. So we have a lot to do. And what we're showing here is the, the efforts that we as a, as a, a, um, a petrochemical company are putting towards um, uh, contributing to this solution. We can move on to the next slide, please. So the idea there is 100 billion uh, bottles and yes, uh, still counting. Um, so just a few metrics in the journey. Um, so far, that's about 2 million tons of waste diverted from the environment. That equals a carbon footprint reduction of almost 3 million tons. Um, on the right side, you see the, you know, the, the, the investment we've made, just over a billion dollars. And this statistic on the bottom right even shocked me, I have to say, when we first ran the numbers. That's like every second, there are over 600 PET bottles recycled by Indorama. Uh, so that's an incredible um, kind of rate when you think about it. Um, and then on the um, on the bottom left, the 1 million people to be educated uh, on recycling by 2030. That's a very exciting program. I'm going to let Kun Nawin Suda talk about that in a moment. Um, I'll pass the baton to her, but I think it's something that you will um, that will resonate with you. And you will see that when it comes to reaching that target of 100 billion per year, we're really leaving no stone unturned. Um, and so we'll get into that in a moment. We can move to the next slide, please. So, um, you know, it really takes a, a value chain or an ecosystem uh, to drive a circular economy. We had the, um, the managing director of the IFC in our offices um, back in 2022. And at the end of a very productive meeting, Makar Diab, he asked our, our group CEO, he said, how can I help you? And, uh, and Mr. Loglohia said, you know, you can really help us with the message around collection. When you speak to leaders of countries, um, collection infrastructure will help us then be able to come in and bring uh, recycling solutions. And it's a very politically sound, politically you know, safe message. We need collection. It, it hits the trifecta of sustainability where it reduces waste. Um, it drives economic activity. And of course, um, uh, creates jobs and, and and cleans up the environment and produces lower carbon uh, products. So, um, you see here that in that slide that it really takes um, a number of partners along the value chain. Let me talk a little bit about policy because that's a key part. And we've had some recent changes in the world, specifically in developing Asia, that are game changers. Uh, first of all, in um, uh, 2022, the Thai government. We're sitting here today in the Thai Pavilion. The Thai government lifted the ban 
on a recycled PET for food and beverage contact. So that's a very significant uh, change. And Indorama was pleased to be one of several companies at the table working with the Thai government to demonstrate the safety and efficacy of recycled PET for the safety of consumers when it comes to drinking water, um, beverages, and, and food packaging. Um, as a result, um, consumers today can go to the convenience store and pick up a bottle of water uh, with a 40% lower carbon footprint. And the population of Thailand is just over 70 million people. So that's very, very significant. Um, India is another country that has lifted the ban. Uh, and part of the reason why we're wanting to participate in the that renewed circular economy in that country um, uh, with our, our two emerging recycling facilities. So collectively, that's over 2 billion people that in, sh in, in a short time will have access um, to uh, recycled PET with a significantly lower carbon footprint um, and also helping to um, clean up uh, waste in, in those countries, which actually already enjoy a very high collection rate of uh, PET bottles in particular. Um, so those are the kinds of policy levers and, and changes that can really unlock incredible potential and as I say, really hit the trifecta around sustainability and a circular economy. We're very excited to um, see those changes, uh, to be working with um, uh, various levels of government leaders uh, in those countries and, and participate in the circular economy there. So these other um, details around advanced recycling technology, I'll move to in a minute. We'll get into more detail. For now, I'd like to pass it to Kunawin Suda. She's going to tell you a little bit more about our recycling education efforts. All right. Thank you, Kun Anthony. You mentioned quite a lot in terms of education. So let me start by giving you all here a glimpse of one of the um, flagship program called Waste Hero. So let us meet teacher Emily. Play with meet teacher Emily. She's a passionate teacher who cares deeply for her students and the environment. Emily wants to teach environmental education to give her students real-world skills to improve our planet. However, she's a busy teacher with no time to prepare extra lessons herself and unsure where to begin. Waste Hero Education is the perfect resource for teachers like Emily. Waste Hero offers 19 free activity-based teacher lesson plans that cover recycling, zero waste, and the circular economy for K-12 and university students. Yep, Teacher Emily, you heard that right. Waste Hero is 100% free. These lessons are designed to reduce teacher prep time, including a lesson script, resources to run activities, and can be modified to fit any classroom context and the time available. Only have time for the activity and not the full lesson? No problem! Need to adjust the lesson to support an existing one? Easy peasy! Waste Hero was designed and validated by teachers for teachers wanting to educate students on how to care for our planet. Click the link now to download the free lessons and begin empowering your students to become future Waste Heroes. Um, we have a little bit of technical issue here inside the pavilion, but I encourage you to go to the West Hero website, which I will have the QR code so you can view this video later. So let me introduce you to our West Hero program. This is come from the idea that we, we believe that education plays a key role in promoting circular economies by instilling a sense of responsibility and recycling culture among the children, which will be the, our future re leaders. This initiative will also help drive circularity, in particular in countries where there may not be the EPR legislation or the extended producer responsibility legislation and the deposit and return scheme for packaging waste. So our commitment is long term. We have an ambitious goal to educate 1 million people by 2030. Um, how are we doing that? We partner with UNUS Thailand, which is an international nonprofit foundation co-founded by Nobel Prize 
Nobel Peace Prize, Professor Mohammad Yunus, to launch the um, program called West Hero, which um, the, the program itself aims to accelerate the effort in raising recycling awareness worldwide. Um, the West Hero Education Lesson Plan consists of 19 education package. You can see here on the screen, so it's covered quite three main pillar, which is about um, recycling fundamental, creating zero waste and building a circular economy. This is a free to use teaching resource which are decided to um, for the global audience ranging from kindergarten to university students. We are aware that because of the um, diverse culture context and also the different in education system in different country, so the material are adaptable to ensure that this initiative can be scaled up and implemented worldwide according to different communities, different languages and educational setting. To enhance the impact of the program, so what we do is we leverage the, um, our partner educational network. For example, we work with CIMIO, which is Southeast Asia Minister of Education Organization, to disseminate this material um, specifically in, in Asia. And we also work with um, the National Education Association in the United States to scale up our education project globally and expand the um, outreach network to ensure that the wider dissemination of our material. Um, that's the, the, the key highlight of this project, but I would like to encourage you all to scan the QR code on the screen here just to access to the material, which I emphasize that it's free to be used and it's already very validated by the educator, so you can find out more about the program. So now may I ask Anthony to take us through our investment in circular innovation, please. Thank you, Kunawi Tsuda. Congratulations again on that, um, you know, really exciting program. Uh, when I do meet people and I, and I talk about um, our existing footprint in recycling, our innovation, uh, agenda, which I'll get to in a moment, you know, all these things are milestones. I always include the Waste Hero program because I think it's an important part of the puzzle. And of course, it's a made in Thailand program, right? It began with your team educating Thai school children in Thai language on recycling. And then uh, you and, and, and the team had this um, concept and ambition to scale it up. So uh, something I think that we can be proud of as well as a made in Thailand solution now with a global impact. We can move to the next slide, please, on investing in circular innovation. So I did mention um, uh, a group based in Milan. So we have a group of leaders with a global scope, very, very seasoned professionals um, in, the, um, uh, in the petrochemical polymer uh, uh, space. And they've been very active in about a year and a half. I'll go into some detail for three or four projects. We can move to the next slide. The first one is a partnership with a UK-based group called Polymateria, and this is um, for non-woven products. So that will mean things like wipes, for example, or uh, as we've uh, recently emerged from COVID, face masks. And these are hard to um, recycle. Um, typically, they're usually made from multi-materials. So in this case, we've partnered uh, with Polymateria, and it's a um, the end product, whether it's a wipe or a face mask, actually... Um, biodegrades, so it becomes a bioavailable wax uh, in nature, just through natural processes, and, and that wax can then be consumed by bacteria or just integrated into the natural ecosystem. So a very benign and and friendly uh, product um, in that sense. And for a, you know, as I mentioned before, PET is quite easy to recycle. The bottles uh, have high volume; they they collect easily, and then there are well known processes for doing that. For things like wipes and and masks, it's actually quite uh, a lot. It's a lot harder to collect, and as I mentioned before, collection is a key piece in the puzzle. So now we've um, uh, intervened in a different way with this um, um, uh, innovation around making the uh, products become bioavailable in a short period, just without any specific um, circumstances. It doesn't have to be a certain temperature um, or certain environmental conditions. So that's one. We can move to the next slide. 
Um, this is a partnership we have with a French biotech company called Carbios, and they are specialists in enzymatic recycling. So this, I, I like to kind of make the parallel with the enzymes in our, in our stomachs when we eat food, which we've done a lot of in these days here at COP, I must confess. Um, where the enzymes help break down the food. It's a similar, it's a parallel process, let's say, when it comes to uh, virgin quality or food grade PET. And um, with Carbios, we are building a commercial scale a site uh, at our location in Long La Ville, France, in the northeast part of France. And you can see a lot of material um, about this partnership and about the exciting Carbios technology. So that's another one. Um, and could also, it is a version of chemical recycling so um, can also incorporate uh, polyester fiber. Um, so this is one that we're also excited about uh, in the mix. We can move to the next slide. This is a partnership with uh, SIPA, and this is actually packaging sparkling wine in uh, PET bottles made from uh, Endorama um, uh, a resin. And what's interesting here is, of course, um, there are many benefits, eco benefits around transportation because of the lightweight around uh, safety and material handling because the bottles don't break and they integrate into the existing glass filling lines. Um, so it's, you know, there are no significant changes to the production. And then even as you can see from the middle photo, the, the spout, the, the opening is such that it can accommodate a regular mushroom type cork. So giving the user a, a similar experience. Um, so this is an interesting innovation. And to me, you know, uh, speaks to the changing consumer um, expectations as well, because especially uh, wine connoisseurs having wine in a PET bottle, that's something that's that's new. I remember when wine came out in, in boxes and cartons, that was also a shift. So we have a shift here that has clear uh, uh, environmental benefits and um, actually was a winner in the uh, Milan Design Award, Packaging Design Award in 2023. So that's a great indication um, that you know anything around design has to have form and function in balance uh, that in fact this collaboration with SEPA has struck that balance. Uh, we can move to the next slide please. So another sort of challenging area for recycling is food trace in fact and we've struck a partnership with um, uh, AMB uh, Spa out of Europe and this has a target to divert more than 150 million post-consumer PET trays from landfill or from incineration by recycling. Um, and uh, this is uh, will then be made into um, food grade transparent film. So another exciting area. Typically, one of the challenges with uh, food contact is the contamination, um, uh, not on the consumer side, but the food contamination to the product that then makes it difficult to recycle. So with AMB, uh, we have a uh, with AMS, we have a a, a, a partnership here to um, actually address that. And that will have a significant diversion um, impact. So just some examples of um, the, our innovation agenda linked to um, the, you know, some of the packaging solutions and some of the end of life scenarios. If we move to the next slide, I'll move up in the process. And this is more on the input side around um, circular feedstock. And this is another area of investment for our innovation team um, out of Italy as an effort to wean ourselves off of uh, fossil fuels. Recycling is one important way and, and bio uh, circular feedstock is another way. And of course, this is very much in line. Um, perhaps people online or, or in the pavilion might not be aware, but Thailand's um, strategy is called BCG, bio circular green. So uh, this part of Indorama strategy aligns fully with the Thai government's aspirations to create a bio-circular bio green BCG um, economy. And uh, this too is an area where we're investing as catalysts because it's difficult to find commercial scale ready um, solutions. And so because of our, our footprint and because of our appetite and because of our deep relationships with our global uh, customers, um, we're investing heavily in testing uh, various solutions um, on the input to come out with uh, some of the um, uh, biofeedstock and the intermediates that you see um, at the top of the chart. And uh, our target is for 16% um, uh, biomass uh, feedstock by 2030 uh, and working hard to um, move towards that target. Just a couple of more slides now, if we can move to the next one, please. As we, um, as we look to um, conclude uh, at least this formal part of the session, 
Uh, first of all, I did mention our reporting and disclosure. It's been a big part of our journey. What's interesting now is, um, you know, I was in New York City for Climate Week when the TNFD framework was launched, the Task Force for Nature-Related Disclosure at the New York Stock Exchange. We've already produced a first TNFD compliant report um, and are um, collaborating with them to see how we can um, continue to improve that. The nature-based solutions that I referenced as part of our decarbonization strategy is also linked to, say, a new reporting framework like that. So this slide talks about um, our compliance and participation in these various frameworks and to some extent our recognition uh, as being very um, uh, transparent and, and comprehensive in our data capture and disclosure. At the same time, um, with TNFD, with CSRD in Europe, um, we know that the, there are more demands coming. And so this is a constant area of activity and innovation for Indorama. And this takes the whole company. I mean, certainly our sustainability team is, uh, you know, we have a number of, um, we have two, a team of two based in India helping to work with our site to capture it. Then the reporting team who takes that and um, will actually uh, convert it into the, some of the reports that you will see here. We actually have a data scientist on our team helping in between. And then a very senior member who's kind of, you know, two senior members, in fact, are really helping to oversee all of this. So it's not everybody's full time job, but this is a big piece. And we recognize this is very important for all of our stakeholders and will continue. So um, please do visit our website. You can see some of the reports. You can uh, see how um, we've fared in this space. And then the last slide, if we can move to the last one, um, like with the Waste Hero QR code, by all means, please, um, if you'd like to view more, you can uh, look at our latest sustainability report. Of course, we have a sort of a digital flip version on the website, so it's quite easy to scan through. There's even something there called the chart generator. So if you're interested in looking at data trends in our sustainability performance, water, waste, energy, renewables, um, there's a live chart generator on the site. So uh, a lot of information. Um, I've taken it rather slowly because we did have an hour. I see we still have a bit of time if there are questions. We have a number of colleagues online. In fact, joining now in Sudan, the pavilion is our colleague Juliana who comes from Brazil. And uh, I believe we have another, we do have another colleague here at COP. Um, he, I think, is online. Um, and then we have others um, who have joined us both in the pavilion and online. So welcome some questions if we have time and technology permits, Kunawi in Suda. Um, we've shared a lot of information. We look forward to hearing from you uh, either in a follow up or directly uh, with the team. I'm still here for a couple of more days um, in Dubai and would be happy to exchange on any of the points that we've covered here. Um, thank you for your attention and uh, look forward to uh, a, a discussion as time permits. Kunawi Suda? Yes. All right. Thank you for the insightful presentation. So, like Anthony mentioned, now it's time for a QA. Probably I start with the, the first question that I received from the audience here just now. For anyone who missed the QR code for the Waste Hero, you can visit the website as well, wasteheroeducation.com. So all the material and everything about the project is available there. I should also mention that even that program we initiated in Thailand, but right now we have um, translate all the material into five languages, which is Portuguese, Spanish, Polish, Thai, and of course, English. So please feel free to go visit and use those material. So that's the first question. Any more question? Yes. Thank you very much for your very important in, uh, information. But anyway, I, I would like to know in the future that uh, how they de develop the, the plastic or uh, some material of plastic in the future, what uh, Indolama uh, we uh, suggest are to, to uh, uh, that plan or the process of, of this. If you okay. mean, um, Yes, so give, thank you. Give, yeah, thank you very much. So if I get your question right, so you mean like um, for Indorama Ventures, um, do we have any plan for um, making plastic more sustainable in the future? Is that correct? Yes, yes, right. Okay. Could Anthony, would you like to address those questions? Sure. Well, Kapun Kap, thank you for the question. Um, 
the answer is absolutely yes. And I, I hope to have conveyed some of those ways. Um, one, through increasing um, the recycling and the circularity. Uh, two, working with governments um, to shift the policy needle because when um, the policy allows for things like recycled PET for food and beverage contact, there's a whole domino effect of economic activity and environmental benefit. Um, uh, the um, new ways of recycling, shall we say, like with carbios, with enzymatic recycling and different types of chemical recycling are another way, which also can address, I, I kind of glossed over the point, but can also address uh, the issue of textile recycling when it comes to uh, polyester fiber, polyester clothing, for instance, which is a parallel uh, waste management challenge uh, of, of society. Um, uh, and then also on the inputs on the biofeedstock will also help reduce the, the carbon footprint. Um, so those are a number of the ways. And then, of course, um, you know, even enablers like the Waste Hero Education Program to help contribute to that. Even, frankly, this conversation, right? And, and of course, myself and others in Indorama, we do a lot of this to uh, have uh, discussions with stakeholders and leaders like yourself to um, see what is the pulse of the market. We also work closely with our customers, um, major um, beverage brands, for example, that everybody would know um, where there's a lot of co-creation and, and co-innovation um, and, and really a sense of partnership. I mean, in the last, even just the last month or so, we've had very important meetings with um, two of our major uh, beverage brand customers focused on how we can work together on these things. So. Uh, it's not something we do in isolation of our customers' needs and requirements, and their requirements are very linked, of course, also to the end consumers. So um, those are some of the things. And um, one thing I, I did forget to mention around the fiber side is that if, um, of course, many people are taking transit to the Expo City, as you should, uh, if, if you did take a car, an Uber or something, um, the tires of the car very likely had Indorama fibers uh, in them. If you wore your seatbelt, that would have Indorama fibers in it. Uh, fortunately, you did you did not need the airbag, I would imagine. But if you did, that also would run the risk of having Indorama fibers. So we have, um, in addition to the PET uh, for food and beverage packaging, um, uh, our fibers, as I mentioned, the wipes, the masks, um, diapers, for example, a number of the automotive solutions, um, personal protective equipment. So this is a, under the polyester form is an everyday touching uh, the lives of everyday consumers around the world. And so we are looking at the sustainability of all of those pieces. Um, my focus today on PET recycling is an important area, but indeed um, uh, we are in, uh, investing in and, and working with our customers in all of those areas. Thank you again for your question. Thanks, Anthony, for the presentation. I'm Juliana from Brazil, and I have also a question. So what are the key enablers for Indorama to achieve a circular economy? Thanks, Juliana. Obrigado. And um, good to hear from you. Um, policy, for sure, is, is a big one. Um, I mentioned, so India is about 1.4 billion people, and Thailand 71.6. So, you know, that's over 2 billion people now that can access, uh, say, a, bo a bottle of water with a 40% lower carbon footprint. That's very significant. And, and, and in those countries, um, potable water is not necessarily coming from the taps yet. So you need different solutions. And, and PET is one of that spectrum of solutions to deliver potable water to people, just to take that one example. So policy is absolutely fundamental. Um, oh, you know, clear signals from our customers is very important, and that's why we work very closely with our customers to make sure we understand their requirements. And they're all global customers, so the requirements vary to a certain degree across geographies. So that's um, um, a series of dialogues and conversations that has been going on for years and, and is now intensifying and, and deepening in terms of the collaboration and the mutual understanding. That's another one. Um, you know, technological innovation and we could say around whether it's chemical recycling or biofeedstock or even other things like, you know, carbon capture or green hydrogen or renewables, we could say, well, we'll just wait until the technology is economically viable and then we'll engage. Uh, and that's really not our approach, as I, I hope to have demonstrated with the, um, the innovation agenda, where we're actually investing as a, as a catalyst to test 
some of these emerging technologies? Can they operate at commercial scale? What would be required? Um, how do we drive um, uh, the economics to be in line with that and not just be a spectator in that, but be an active participant? So that's another way. And I think we're uh, we're doing what we can. I would love to hear if there are opportunities to, 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 to deepen our work in that area. I, I know that our team in Milan would also be open. And indeed here, I've already you know, met uh, three or four innovators um, with different types of solutions, which I've been sharing with the team back home. So that's part of, I think, COP as well, is uh, connecting with uh, you know, really exciting people with really exciting technologies and then seeing how they might fit into our activities. So yes, policy, um, you know, customer collaboration, um, technology development, financing for sure. Um, the Blue Loan is just one example. Um, Indorama has, because of our sustainability leadership, we've, we've been able to enjoy um, the benefits of various sustainable financial tools. Um, and uh, you know, we work closely with our corporate finance uh, team on that. And that's an area that we want to continue. Um, investing in and, and taking advantage of because uh, it does help to de-risk a number of these innovations. So finance is absolutely another piece. Um, I'm sure I'm missing some, but let me stop there. That's, and you know, each of those could probably fill a presentation because there's so much depth and breadth uh, to each of those pillars along the way. Um, but let me stop there and uh, make perhaps we have time for one more question. Okay. Any more question here? Okay, so it's look like no more questions. So I bring this session to the end. Um, before we wrap up, I like to thank you, the Department of Climate Change and Environment, for the opportunity for Indorama Ventures to join and have a session in Thai Pavilion, which is the first year that that we join under Thai Pavilion. Very pleasure for us. Thank you, Kun Anthony, for his time and expertise. And of course, a big thank you to the audience here. And please don't forget to visit our little display at the back. So we, 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 I will stay around this area. So if you have any questions, please feel free to come to me. Thank you and have a great afternoon.